my topic is localization of, of add-ons uh, and a little bit localization of farming code in general. So quick background. Um, first of all, I hope most of you saw uh, uh, Yuri's session yesterday about add-ons, which was really helpful uh, and a, a great introduction to many of, of the things you run into. Um, I've not, I've done one add-on I published on the uh, Claris Marketplace. I haven't gone quite as far as, as yours in some of the general things. I've, I've kind of not mainly played around with localization, but it's, it's, it's one aspect I've looked closer at. So why, why, why do, do I do that and why this topic? Well, the first one, as you can see, uh, FileMaker Pro uh, is unlike most other programming environments, it's localized. It's kind of um, what many, uh, at least citizen developers, beginning developers expect. I saw like even yesterday, today, there's a lot of code in Japanese, uh, German, uh, Spanish, et cetera, at this uh, conference, especially like guild comps and things like that. Uh, and to me, the localization, of course, Fadenbrink is only localized into about, well, not about exactly 11 languages, including English. Uh, so it's not exactly a majority of the languages in the world, but at the same time, the languages do represent a large part of the world's population if you count all the people who speak at least or can communicate in one of those languages. And for a lot of us who come from a non-programming background, it's just part of how they could be closer to the end user, closer to the client. And also being able to integrate developers who may not have this, the traditional IT background, like most of us. And also part of the other reason is that I way back when I wanted to do linguistics, I've always been interested in, in languages. And um, I've, with the years going by and me changing countries, become increasingly um, linguistically confused myself. So I, I kind of like localization is something that's, um, or like handling different languages is something I, I need to deal with on a daily basis, be it in everyday life or in, or in program, because I also have clients in a number of different languages. Uh, so, um, FileMaker comes localized, German, Spanish, and English are the ones I have running here. Um, when you create a new sample fi file with FileMaker running, running in German, uh, you'll get a, a file that is uh, localized. And the concept of localized I'm using here is that it's, it's not just about the um, the actual um, user interface. It's the script names. Um, of course, in FileMaker itself, the script actions are localized. Uh, the field names, field indexing as well, hopefully. Yes, it's also localized. So there are lots of different levels on which you can localize the programming language itself. And in practice, all out localization is not always the easiest, best choice, but I would kind of like if that was possible. And if you want to add an, an add-on, uh, you'll see that the add-ons that come with um, FileMaker built-in are kind of, you see for the these just the JavaScript ones, the description is, is localized, but actually the names of the layouts, table scripts have not been localized. Whereas for these older, uh, first generation add-on tables, uh, they actually do have the table names and scripts uh, localized as well. And um, you already talked about a lot about the reason for doing uh, add-ons uh, yesterday. So I'm not going to go into repeat what he said, but one thing to pay attention to is that if you are uh, clicking this link to open the marketplace, it will open the German marketplace if you run it from the German FileMaker Pro. And the French from the French and the Spanish isn't live yet because there aren't enough add-ons, etc. But that's something for us, for us as developers from a marketing standpoint, that to me is a reason to be able to have our add-ons localized. I don't know if you like Clickworks, uh, if you did them in, in the NL localization or not, but uh, or French, but um, no, not yet. that's something I, I would recommend doing. And you'll soon have the tool to do that in, in 10 seconds. So that's fine. Uh, um, and also for me, uh, the other is the internal use of add-ons. When 
I as a developer I'm working, I want to use my add-ons when I'm building my solutions. Of course, if I have a solution that's in uh, running in German and I add this whole bunch of code and that's suddenly in English, it's kind of confusing, especially uh, in the case of solutions where the users still want to be able to look at the code and maybe modify the code or at least be able to read the code. And I have some clients that actually have larger solutions that require that everything be in German. So there I have all my standard modules. This was kind of pre add on. So that's when I started doing my first clipboard localization tools, which I ended up abandoning uh, because that format was not so nicely structured for localization. But the good thing with, with add ons is that FileMaker has now finally provided us with um, a method for doing localization, which is a big step forward compared to what we had before, even though it's still not perfect. And I am also assuming or hoping that the, all the other XML based text file based formats we have, and in the future, we're creating a, a file file from X, uh, an XML representation will all either include uh, tools to do localization or in any case, since it's text based, we can, we can build those tools ourselves if, if we have to. So basically my, my dream scenario would be to have my, uh, little uh, fantastic, fascinating add-on. I want to have my uh, utility. And then basically, I just want to localize it, right? That would be, for me, uh, the perfect uh, scenario because localization is kind of time consuming if you do it manually, depending on how many languages you want to, want to localize into. I personally try to do the five I kind of feel I can, I sometimes have to work in. Uh, I would, oh, sorry. Uh, okay, we're done. Um, uh, and I wouldn't personally not localize into a language I can't really read, unless I have some uh, some external collaborator, of course. So now uh, we've done our localized add-on. We can start our, our file makers in uh, Spanish and German again. We'll create a new uh, file for, for the meeting. So everything here nice and localized in Spanish. We'll jump over to the German version. Uh, we'll also create a new uh, meetings. Of course, interestingly, the German localization uses quite a lot of uh, Anglices. Uh, so it's called meetings in German as well. Um, and then basically once I'm in, in this version, uh, I want to be able to uh, just make some room for my, my add-on, see if I can find it. And as you can see, the category, everything basically is, is localized. And I'll just drag it onto the layout as well. Spanish is basically the same. Oh, of course, now it's in Spanish instead. And if we now want to uh, use these add-ons, well, we can talk uh, to the add-on a little bit. Uh, and like when we uh, enter data, it's uh, it's all in German, uh, the value list, and in Spanish will be uh, very nice. And for those of you who speak Spanish, if any Spanish speaking, this is where you start seeing that there are some issues with uh, <laughs> this fantastic one-click uh, translation because the translation of multa for fine is correct, but totally wrong in this context because it, it means fine in, uh, when you have to pay for wrong parking and not that you are doing well. Uh, so I'm not doing very well, but it wishes that I'll be uh, okay. So to further look at some of the limitations, the translation is in this one on automatic is kind of, uh, kind of stupid. So for inter one interesting caveat here is that actually the text on uh, buttons in custom dialogues do not get localized by, uh, are not localizable by natively the way they, uh, the add-ons work. So I actually, uh, I get bottom and top like it was in the re English original. 
and then it's not able to tell me where, where the camel is. So I actually need to do some little localization to be able to get the Unterseite, which also it tells you own translation for bottom in, the, in this function. And then you can actually calculate it, but unfortunately it stripped out some spaces. Um, so that's basically my demo. Uh, I will also show a couple of things about how David, this actually works. David, sorry, can I ask a question? Sure, go ahead. The last, the last thing you said like, those buttons I cannot localize. And then you said, but here I localized it. Yeah, okay, well, sorry, thank you. So uh, so what you do is uh, you, you store the uh, button title in a variable instead. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and then of course, to be able to have the get layout object attribute uh, uh, bottom string, not be localized, you can use any kind of stupid method like getting the character value of the string uh, bottom. I mean, this is, as I posted on, this, on, on the chat before, I want to do a, a session that does humor belong in programming. So this is kind of part of that session in a way. It is not the way I would probably not do it. But when you are localizing, you need to adapt the way you program. That is kind of the more serious lesson. If you want to have something that's easily localizable, even though it's not in one click, you need to think a little bit about how you structure the coding. So if, if we've already moved away, far away from hard coding, you need to take a couple of steps more to be able to have something that's easily localizable. Uh, so I've used this for the one, uh, this tool I'm showing you for the one plugin I have uh, on the marketplace. Uh, but um, I didn't use this uh, fully automated one one stop one click uh, option. Basically, I did four part of the steps, and then I corrected the translation. So I did the five I, I did here. I only did for German and Spanish, and then of course I'm using Google Translate to do the translations, initial translation, and then I normally I will correct that based on my understanding because the different strings will not always get translated the same way. Uh, another little detail we talked about yesterday, because there are a lot of different files that get that are part of the add-on, of course. So the ones that get localized are these are the localizable strings, the de.xml, etc. What most people localize is just this, uh, basically this JSON file, which is the description. Uh, oh, so that's the oh, that's the unchanged copy. Sorry, oops. So this is what you get by default when you create your add-on, which is kind of not so nice. Um, and then um, if you do localize it, uh, you can set your own string. So this is the one, one of those where I needed to add a byte order marker to the beginning of the JSON file for FileMaker to be able to read it. Uh, it's like it's like code stuff. Like <laughs> once you know, it's very easy. Uh, but the first time um, you don't know, uh, you kind of lose time over that. So here I just do have a custom function bomb by dramatically and add that before the contents of the actual JSON, and then it works fine. We're halfway, uh, fifteen minutes. Yep. Okay. Perfect. And then. Um, Another thing is uh, one of the little caveats you discover as you're working with this, you notice that uh, what FileMaker considers to be a unique string uh, is maybe not the same thing as what I would consider to be a unique string. So if we just um, look at the ones that occur more than once, um, we have should have prepared a better example for this. Um, well, we had, the, I think we had the, uh, probably the bottom, right? So bottom actually appears twice in the template XML, which is the actual code of the database, if you like, that just points to the localization files. Once it's used as the hard coded parameter to get a attribute and the other time it's, I'm using it as a word. So of course, if you do, that's why we got the error we, we got before. So you can need to pay attention to that. Filemaker by itself, you can kind of get the string type, but the, the list is 
Some of them are very useful, but then you have a bunch of stuff that just ends up being calculation text. So if you're doing your manual localization, tweaking the translation, knowing that something is equation text isn't really helpful. So I've started doing my own kind of ex extra parsing to try to like pull out the XML tag that I think is kind of relevant for me when I'm doing my translation. But at the same time, this is still just the first time it appears. So this is kind of work in progress. Uh, and basically, I'm not recommending anyone to use this tool, though I'm kind of using it. Uh, but I think we should all think about doing localization of our code and especially of our add-ons. So that's basically what I have to say. Oh, one extra last thing. The first time you create an add-on, I go crazy with this one being uh, resized, the preview is always like a stretched version of the original one. So I added that aut automating, uh, just creating a, a larger version of the PNG. That's the file icon. And then of course, if you're doing the proper add-on, you'll drop another image in the right dimensions in here, and then that will get exported in, in the end. Okay. Any questions, comments? Has anyone else localized any add-ons? No, not yet. So you're localizing the data in your file also just by manipulating directly the XML file. Uh, very good question. The actual data, my add-ons so far didn't have any data. Um, yeah, because you had a value list, but that was just a FileMaker native. Yes, yeah, exactly. It's a FileMaker native element. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, my plan is next time I do an add-on that has data, I'll deal with that. It's There's no reason not to do it. It's just XML or it's just text files rather that we can parse. But like if you download the file and look at the program, like the XML parsing is, is there's no plugins, it's just file maker text functions. It's all nice and primitive. Uh, so translating the data is, is a very interesting because that's where localization becomes a lot trickier. I mean, I've been complaining about this on Twitter lately when I was preparing this session, I was looking at the localized files by FileMaker and the way they've done it is you need to do more than just translate if you want to properly localize because the fields you want, the order of the fields in an address is different depending on the country. I mean, we were all very well aware of that, even though like, a so, uh, yeah. Sorry, uh, a question about the FM add-on file that is created at the same time as I deleted. the files and JSON files are exported, but yeah. you cannot use that one if you want to do what you are doing now, right? Exactly, that's why it's the, the, this file uses, it's, it's Mac only, it uses, Apple script running shell scripts to delete and move stuff around. So if you use it, you should be aware that it will kill your existing add-ons if they have the same names as the ones you're creating. Uh, but yeah, that is, I mean, I've seen, I think it was one from Listerius where in the FM add-on file, they did have some of the localized stuff localized. So I think somebody has access to the tools to do that, but not everybody, but that's just speculation based on observing public information. I'm not aware of any such tools. Yeah. I know they are in development, but uh, yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I mean, in a way, very much like for me, what, one thing I have with Koji's presentation as well, what he showed us should really kind of would be nice to have built in with FileMaker Server with some options. And I think something like this, but using proper technology rather than what I'm using would also be um, be helpful. Yeah, it's definitely what they are looking at. Um, but I don't know in which release this will follow. Mm. We have nine minutes left for uh, questions. Okay, so, so it's very interesting. I am always surprised at how few people are doing or thinking or talking about localization of code even though as we saw, people are still programming in their own languages. So how come this is not- Localization, uh, but not add-ons. Localization, yes, but add-ons not yet. I didn't create any add-ons. Um, well, you can local, I mean, the same basic concepts will apply to anything we can generate based on text, or even the clipboard. Well, it's, ju it's just development for some, you know, in Brussels and, and Joris knows that as well. <laughs> some customers are three languages. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, that's that's when you have that uh, situation, you um, mostly 
don't want to localize the programming. No, I'm always very happy when the customer says, oh, English is fine. Then no, yeah. <laughs> great. <Really. laughs> yeah, and uh, to be honest, so am I, because it makes my life so much easier. Yes. But I, I, do, have, uh, I do have customers. And, and once again, for this, if you're using add-on as a way to market yourself, it is good to show up, especially now that there aren't so many add-ons on the other shops, you'll kind of be seen quickly. So if you're early localizing, uh, that's a little bit, not enough to like pay the work that you put into doing the tools to create the localization probably, <laughs> like with add-ons in general, but I think it's, it's a nice touch. And I, I also don't know if I mentioned, but I posted, I, I guess I should post the, uh, the link to the download as well. I posted it on the, on the session, in the session files, but I, I'll post that uh, in, in the uh, so chat as well. So uh, if anyone wants to have a look at that. Okay, well, uh, I will uh, say thank you in that case.